All right, Fantasy Grounds College, this is G. Rex, the moderator for tonight. Uh, we have a symposium and Q&A session with Matthew Springe and Colin Mad Beardman. Uh, if you don't know why you're here, that's what you're here for. Hopefully you signed up online. Uh, we will be giving away a hardcover rulebook at the conclusion of this event. Uh, Laroon, do you have any opening announcements before we begin? Uh, yes, I want to thank everyone for showing up and for supporting us. Uh, we have a program now that we are featuring other live rule sets um, in Fantasy Grounds. So we are trying to get to all the different rule sets throughout the year. So next month we are going to have a second edition D&D, &D and it's going to rotate every month. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mad Beardman and our friend and guest, Matt. Um, so go ahead and take it away, guys. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to start by introducing um, our first guest uh, from Mongoose Publishing. He is the managing director and a game designer, uh, Matthew Sprinch. If you would go ahead and say hi to the audience. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And next up is uh, Fantasy Grounds uh, game designer, rule set developer, uh, Colin Mad Beardman. Uh, just like Matthew said, good evening everybody. It's coming up to my bedtime, but I thought I'd stay up for this. Awesome. I appreciate that. And we for for everybody that's here, uh we uh we are a global community. This this happened to be the, the time we coordinated. Uh, I know it's really late in, in Great Britain and Europe. Uh probably early morning in Oceania and getting in the, into the late evening time here in North America. All right, so uh, tonight's format, um, we're going to have all mics muted. Uh, I uh, am controlling as the moderator. Uh, Laroon, Matthew and Mad Beardman, they will be open. Uh, Zane, uh, one of the faculty members here helping out with uh, the Traveler Rule Set Month, will be helping uh, cover us in Discord chat, answering questions in there. Uh, Laroon is moderating and monitoring our Twitch stream. So any of our Twitch audience out there, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask them in the Twitch chat and Laroon will, will forward them over. Um, as a moderator, I will be alternating asking pre-generated questions and topics. Uh, we'll start with Matthew tonight. Um, what we're asking is if you are in Discord, if you have a follow-on question that's relevant to the topic we're on, get that out in chat and then we will unmute you for you to ask your question. If you're not comfortable with your voice, uh, software or hardware, uh, just let me know or Zane know and, and we can read it out loud for you. Um, and again, I will open your mic for you to speak if that's if, if we're good with that. Um, after I've asked, there's five five general topics we're going to be touching. After these five, uh, we're going to open up to an open Q and A at the end. Um, because our, our our guests have been so generous with their time, I am going to hard cap tonight's event at two hours. So um, if the questions die down before then, that's fine. There is no minimum time requirement tonight. But uh, at 10 minutes remaining, I'm going to hard cut us off, so that way I could do the drawing for the giveaway. And with that, do we have any, any questions? Go ahead and ask it in chat if you're, if you're concerned about tonight's format. Otherwise, we'll begin. See a couple questions coming through. Hello. 
<laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll get on the, uh, the the stuff that's coming out here at the end. So okay, sounds like we're good. So I'm gonna start uh, with Matthew. Uh, so if you don't mind, just tell us uh, about Mongoose Publishing, general history, then all we down high level down to low level. What what rules you guys are developing? Okay, well, Mongoose is a UK-based uh, tabletop company. We've just entered our 20th year in business, although it seems like, frankly, yesterday that we started all of this. It's been a bit of a ride. Uh, we started in 2001 with um, D20-based books, um, supporting D&D 3rd edition. Um, things very quickly spiraled up from there. Um, today we're doing... Um, Traveller as uh, our main system, but uh, very closely followed by uh, Paranoia. We also have the Sea of Thieves, Thieves RPG based on the uh, video game. Um, we're a fairly small company. We've got uh, three employees at the moment, full-time, uh, but we're bringing in more people this year. Um, we've... Uh, been messing around with uh, miniatures games in the past, although we've, while we're still de developing actual miniatures games, we've now passed that on to other companies such as Warlord, um, and we're looking into um, other areas of license, um, for example, uh, video games. Um, we've got uh, a couple for our Victory C miniatures games out um, at the moment. Uh, but what I think will be of more interest to people, and I'm sure we're going to get some questions on this later, we've got two video games in development now for Traveller. <laughs> yeah, that's really great news. Um, how's, how's that for an I opening? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt, appreciate it. Uh, we're going to flip it to uh, Colin real quick. Colin, um, you want to tell us a little bit about your tabletop gaming history, how you got involved playing on Fantasy Grounds, and then, in, and then transitioning to being a developer? Okay. Well, I started role-playing, uh, I think, 84 or 85, which at that time was just some AD&D. &D, uh, and I've role-played ever since until my kids turned off about 15 years ago when I stopped. Um, I played pretty much everything you can name. Really heavily involved in the likes of Traveller, especially the little black books at the time in the late 80s, Call of Cthulhu, D&D, RuneQuest, anything. Just loved it. Loved the Shadowrun, loved the cyberpunk. Um, you know, really digging the reading, the cyberpunk red that I've got on my screen now, or it was earlier anyway. Um, and then... That's led me, um, because of the kids and stuff, uh, I moved, and then I got into online gaming quite a lot, and then about five, six years ago, we started using VTTs. Um, the first one we used for some Savage World stuff was Roll20, but found that it had so many bugs and things and problems. One of our group found Fancy Grounds, and since then, um, we've been stuck using it. We've all switched over to it. We've got friends in Australia who play with us, um, like Craig. He'll be online now, and it'll be about 9 o'clock in the morning for him. Um, and it, you know, being the background that I am, which is a software developer, it was perfect. Fantasy Grounds, I can tweak the rule sets and create my own content without any issues. And uh, that's where I am at the moment. Very cool. Just going through the questions. I say, uh, we have the, some excitement on the video games I see in chat. Russ, we'll get back to you. We're gonna. I see your question. Uh, it'll be relevant coming up. Then Matthew, if you don't, you don't mind, just tell us about your gaming history, uh, both as a player and game developer. Yeah, well, um, I started at a uh, uh, very early age. Frankly, I, I blame Star Wars. I was about four years old when uh, uh, it came out in, in uh, the cinemas, and I can actually, re one of my earliest memories is sitting there watching the film. Um, but gaming-wise, um, I started off with the old fighting fantasy and lone wolf books at uh, primary school. 
Uh, and one day uh, a teaching assistant came in, saw me and my friend um, reading those books, and he says, I th I've got something I think you'll like. Uh, and uh, he got me playing my first game of Tunnels and Trolls. Uh, that, during the summer holidays after that, I pestered my parents for the Redbox D&D basic set. And frankly, I, I never looked back. Um, from uh, basic d and I went into GW's uh, Judge Dredd. Um, and then on to Traveller. Um, <laughs> speaking to Mark Miller, um, I do take some delight in reminding him that I was 12 years old when I uh, first played his game. <laughs> Um, no, uh, from there, went through AD&D &D and many, many other game systems into the miniatures games as well. Um, funnily enough, I didn't get into video games um, properly until I was uh, uh, in my 20s. Um, no, uh, aside from that, I've been playing games pretty much um, um, all my life, so it seemed quite natural to... Uh, uh, do a job that uh, revolved around them. Yeah, very cool. Both of you got a lifetime of gaming, it sounds like. It, it beats a real yeah. job. Just we'll get paid doing what you like. <laughs> right, so we're going to come back to uh, Colin. So uh, what kind of pop culture items influence you when playing Traveler? Uh, we're talking movies, television, books, video games, etc. Is there uh, anything like that you're interested in that, that you see in your games? Uh, yeah, yeah, quite um, quite a lot. Being a techie since, I suppose since I was probably 12, when my, my dad bought home a BBC microcomputer, um, I've read, I read everything I could get my hands on in the 80s when my eyes worked that was um you know arthur c clark one of my favorite favorite authors read everything he's got and i've listened to most of it on some of the audio books these days um certainly films as matthew said star wars uh, i can also remember watching star wars when i was uh I, I was five years old at the time when that came out i can still remember a certain scene in that film and every time i watch it uh, it takes me back there, sitting with my mum at the time. But also, films-wise, the likes of Alien and Aliens, um, Silent Running, 2001, anything that's got a hint of science fiction with big ships and the desolation of where you are in space because there's nobody else for you, know, ultra billions of miles anywhere. Um, loved it. Love it all. Um, and I think video games... For me as well, recently, uh, the Mass Effect games were fantastic. Absolutely loved them. Um, didn't didn't get on with certain parts of it, but just the whole idea of all the alien races and stuff like that. Um, and over here in in the eighties, we had a TV series called Blake Seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's what you really lit. Put your license for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I think that lit the fire for science fiction for me because that was about a, a crew on board a starship. There are only seven of them, but they're all independently skilled and they were defeating the man, as it was. Um, but I think these days, I think The Expanse is a great series to watch on TV. It's very Traveller, that is. Obviously in into the system rather than uh, jumping to other systems. Um, um, Battlestar Galactica has reboot, what, 15 years ago now, I think it was, and a bit of Firefly as well. Just so much out there that I take a little bit of, I suppose, everything that I've ever really liked and put them into the games that I run because the, the Traveller rules and the Traveller universe, you can find a planet that, suit, that just fits exactly what the kind of planet that you want to run your game in. You know, if there isn't one, you can make it, can't you? Uh, and... That I think is so expandable. It's wonderful. Sorry, I'm rambling now because I'm tired. That's right. No, yeah, you hit a spot on. I almost almost started running my campaign in a a uh, uh, like a Babylon Five uh, setting because it's it's clear with Traveler that you could set your setting outside the Third Imperium of Man and do however you want to do it. Yeah, see, that's another fantastic TV series as well. Apart from the final 
series of it, of course. But you know, there's there's Traveller is just you want to play cowboys and Indians in a sense. You know, you can find a planet to do that with the tech levels, and then you can bring, of course, a starship into that, like they did in Firefly TV series, and it just makes the whole lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. I think Matthew, I got the follow-up question is identical. Yeah. Um, well, it, for the traveler, it's a, a specific sort of science fiction, so you do get the um, obvious touchstones, um, things, um, things like uh, Firefly, Expanse, Outland, and what have you. Um, and we do reach out for other influences for specific areas. For example. Um, the recent Deep Night Revelation campaign um, we ran on Kickstarter, uh, I was very much pointing the artists towards um, films like um, uh, Interstellar and Sunshine. This is the kind of um, feel we wanted. Um, uh, also, um, the original Carl Sagan's uh, Cosmos. We wanted a real grand majesty of the uh, universe kind of feel to that campaign. Um, when we uh, started looking at doing the uh, second edition of Traveller, we wanted to kick up everything um, in terms of presentation and art style. Um, so when we came to look at things like um, combat armor, for example, <clears throat> we uh, Mass Effect was um, certainly uh, an influence there. Uh, but beyond that, we do try and draw on uh, as wide a field as possible. So you start to look beyond um, regular science fiction. So you're looking at um, the war films and war stories going back through history, um, uh, touching on things uh, as diverse as, um, well, anything from Inspector Morse to the, uh, to the West Wing. It all gets fed into the mix. So you can try and find um, specific touchstones that you can point uh, writers and artists towards and say this this is the kind of feel we want um, but you do it kind of through the lens of Traveller so you don't just bring the West Wing into uh, into Traveller you kind of like uh, put your Traveller glasses on and then think well what does it look like now what is it with what's the core that we're trying to get to um, if, if if that makes sense <laughs> oh, yeah it totally does for me and you said something I hadn't I hadn't thought about until you mentioned it is the uh, how different Mongoose Traveler 2's artwork and kind of them thematically is different from previous editions. Yeah. Yes. Well, on the when we did our first edition, we were obviously um, deliberately trying to um, ape the um, classic Traveler and the little black books. Um, uh, we had done that not just in terms of presentation, but the rule set as well. We wanted something um, to be comfortable to veteran players. But more specifically, it's because we have um, a policy or a guideline at Mongoose that we produce the games that we want to play ourselves, which is why you've seen us do um, games such as Traveller, such as Paranoia. These are the games we were playing when we were kids. We still like them. We still want to play them. Um, no, nobody else was doing them at the time. So, yeah, we'll take up the bass and do it. Um, but when we moved to the second edition, we wanted to keep the rules more or less as they were. There was some, there was some cleanup to do, and the rules are more of an evolution um, between the, the editions. But we really wanted to kick up the presentation of it. First, drag traveler kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, but also changing the style of uh, artwork, for example, allowed us to explore Traveller in um, uh, a brand new way. We're not just doing it through the rules, not just doing it through the text. You can open a book and you can see what uh, an Aslan city um, should really look like. And we do have ulterior motives here as well. I've already mentioned the, uh, uh, the video games. But we're starting to look at um, Traveller on um, uh, on the big screen as well. Um, and to do that, you really need something um, arresting to attract attention. Um, you need, it's all about um, the world building of it. So Traveller has a, a great deal of depth and lore, but that hasn't really advanced beyond the written word. 
So um, we're trying to expand travel out into different directions. So, so the foresight, to be clear, wasn't because it looks great on fantasy grounds. It's because you, you really have <laughs> you really have a, a, a like a long term vision with with the IP then. Well, very much so. I mean, this is something we work very closely with um, uh, Mr. Miller with, um, and in that sense, we've always felt. Well, what's the best way to explain this? I mean, travel has been part of my life in one way or another since I was 12 years old. Um, and Mr. Miller has given us both um, a great deal of latitude and a great deal of responsibility in um, uh, playing around in his, in his sandbox. So um, there, is, there is a side of it that we want to do uh, the very best for him and the universe he's created. Um, and that meant, I say we're bringing it round, that meant on the second edition, really cranking up the, uh, the level of presentation. Um, we got to the point now where with every big project we do, we're always asking ourselves, how can we top the last one? So we, de we set the, uh, the baseline with the core rulebook and high guard and central supply and so forth. But then we brought out the Pirates of Janax, which was a massive project for us at the time it took it took about a year to bring it all together and that's after we had all the text for the first edition version of it and we had all the playtesting done for it it still took a year to bring that all together into the was it four and a half kilogram um slip case that it is at the moment um, um sorry i've completely lost my thread now <laughs> sorry um, but it was a very good point I was about to make. <laughs> but, yeah, to interrupt there, I, I think that a modern game has to look like a modern game as well. I've seen people in my gaming store pick up a book, flick through it, and put it back. And when you look at what they've put back and what they've carried on looking through, generally there's a high level of art, isn't there? There's a high level of presentation of colour. And th these are the things that, especially with Kickstarter, you've seen a lot of companies produce a lot of art in their books. Um, and, and as we all know, that's the most expensive part of a, of a book, artwork. You know, my, my eldest, she wants to be an artist, and she's seen some of the prices that artists charge and thinks she'll be very, very rich. You know, if she can find the work, great for her. But the likes of Chaosium recently, didn't they, a few years ago, with their seventh edition, started to revamp all the designs of their books. Uh, Newman Era, those books as well, lots of lots of artwork, lots of style and design, all the Pathfinder stuff, the Starfinder. If your product looks old, which I say, I picked up um, what some of the Faza books at Gen Con in 2017, and they hadn't been updated in years, and it's just I don't think they'll grab the attention anymore of, of video gaming kids if they don't look shiny. Yeah, so th for me there's some nostalgia in, a, in the black and white line drawings, but you're right, yeah. If it's brand new on the shelf, it's hard to pick up. Well, we went to, at, at Gen Con in 2017, went to a Mike Pondsmith presentation for Cyberpunk, and one of his questions was, do I keep the 2020 artwork I had done 30 years ago or do I update it? And the consensus from the crowd at the end time was, you have to update it. You know, but what he's done, if you look through the book, there's certainly, they're tipping the hat to those original drawings and styles of drawings. They've just presented them in a more modern way. Yeah, definitely. Matt, did the, that, that idea come back to you? It did, actually. I do apologize. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about raising the bar every time. Um, yeah, so Pirates of Dranax was the first one where we really kicked it up a notch. Um, but every big project after that now, um, we're always looking at different ways, not just of improving the artwork or adding more of it, but looking at different ways on how to present the information. So, um, for example, with uh, Element Cruisers, um, we figured, well, we'll do some um, uh, deck plans for this big ship. Uh, but given the nature, <laughs> we made the mistake of putting on Kickstarter, which is always um, an invitation for us to go much further than we originally planned, because 
as as the Kickstarter process is going on, we're talking to people and um, more backers are coming in. Uh, we get to the point where we start thinking, wouldn't it be a whiz a whiz idea if we did X, Y, and Z? Which is why you end up with uh, blueprints that don't just fit on a poster. They get that you can stack them along the floor. So if you have the whole ship length to length, it's uh, longer than any human is tall. Um, that wasn't the intention right at the start. It, it is something that grew. We've um, gone uh, went further again with Deep Night Revelation, um, using the artwork to, as I said before, get across the majesty of the universe as the travellers are moving through it. Um, and earlier today, we um, put onto ebook and pre-order The Glorious Empire. Um, now, that is just, in inverted commas, just um, uh, a setting source book for a small empire within one sector. But I'm going to go ahead and say that's the best artwork we've done in maybe any book ever. So I'd say it's, it's just a case of always trying to beat ourselves. That's, uh, I don't know where that's going to lead because there's, it's going to come a point where we're, we're getting some serious artists on board. <laughs> yeah, we got a, yeah, so the artwork's phenomenal. We have a good question going on in our chat from Dalton. Uh, Mad Beardman has, has answered. Colin, do you, would you like to vocalize that? I could, I, I'm gonna, I, we're going to do uh, this. I'll get, I'll get Dalton unmuted. We'll get our first uh, cue in here. How about that? Because this looks good. Uh, Dalton, I have you unmuted. If you want to unmute your mic, and you're welcome to ask uh, about that portrait packing, et cetera. Hi, Colin. Hi, Matthew. Can you guys hey, hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the things that are currently available, for instance, uh, the portrait pack. Um, I may not want the Pirates of Drynex, or I may not want um, one of the other sessions, but the portraits themselves are something I could use in my own games. Um, I happen to be somebody who buys everything because I buy everything, um, but the average player can't afford that. And to have, say, specific things where you just have all the animals from all the modules as an add-on module. You're not needing to create anything new, but it's something that people can use in their games. Um, just resource packs um, that wouldn't require you guys to generate any new stuff, but you could repackage it that's better for people who are using fantasy grants. Is that an idea that you guys would be interested in? Well, I did post this exact question on the forums, um, asking if people wanted to effectively buy the token pack from, say, the Pirates Drenax, which will give you something like 200 tokens. Um, you know, you split them down. It's probably 60 ships. There's probably 140 NPCs and stuff. Um, and it was quite, the responses were quite negative. And people didn't like the idea that if they bought this pack, they might have already got some of the items from this pack. Um, so it's, you've also got to think about some of the adventures have only got three or four or six or ten. So it's quite hard to give something that's of the right qual quality versus the value, I suppose, because there is a price limit, a minimum price amount that you can charge on Fantasy Grounds, which is... $4.99. It doesn't seem to be much for 10 tokens or something. Yeah, so so, you have to package it together, is what you're saying, to get the money's worth? Yeah, you would, but you know, um, somebody else would probably have to come up with the best idea of how this would be packaged. Because you're right, I've got sitting on my um, my machine you know, 600 tokens across all the books. Uh, and you're right, I do use the tokens from other books in my games because you always want that Aslan or that Vagra uh, or J Jim the Hiver, and I've got him, so I can use him. So I do understand, but somebody needs to come up with something that I suppose everybody would be happy with because it still takes time even to package things together and push them. Uh, I know I personally have manually gone through that with all the PDFs I've bought, um, but it would have been nicer to be able to buy it. And um, 
as I have um, stated on the forums, um, I would love to see everything split out instead of one big resource having the ships um, in one, having the equipment in another instead of it all being in one module. Right now, the way Fantasy Grounds works, I load up the um, core rules, load up the CSC. I've now got double entries for a lot of the equipment. Yeah, it's just the way Fantasy Grounds works, and it's, it's a pain. yeah, yeah. Uh, and if it was, I pay for having it split. Yeah, you come across technical issues with that, but. Um, I hope that Fantasy Grounds in the future with Unity come up with a way of if they see if they see duplicate items because they are duplicate items they can hide one of them. Yeah, I should ask Dom about that. If enough people ask them for it though, because the problems in D and D as well, then I'm sure they'll pay attention. But you know, they're a small company as well, um, working uh, on what they think is important. Um, so be be vocal on the forums. Go go and be vocal in the main forums and uh, ask. Because <laughs> you are, Dalton, some of the ideas you come up with on the forums are fantastic. And I am building that task chain extension because it's, it's yeah, just I great. I that idea. So, yeah, so carry on. It, it, since we're... Not a problem. Um, Dalton, if you don't mind... Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm going to actually, you made me think of something. I'll leave your mic open, uh, but I, uh, for Matt, it, we see this a lot in other um, uh, companies. Well, they'll do art pack, like a books uh, of, of featuring the artwork. Is that something that Mongoose is considered? It is something, we have done it before in um, our D20 days, um, and it's... Uh, that, that's the kind of thing I'd say, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, we'll put it in the hopper and uh, I'll get someone doing it tomorrow. Um, the problem is um, our, <laughs> our bottleneck at the moment is with our graphics teams, a couple of um, uh, nice ladies who work all hours of the day and desperately need um, one or two more people to join them. Um, once we come out of lockdown, we'll be adding more to the uh, graphics team. Um, it is just a case of where we put our efforts. Um, do we do um, an art pack, or would you prefer to see, um, I don't know, the Fifth Frontier War come out at uh, long last? That's always, always the balancing act. Um, so, yes, I would like to do absolutely everything. Can't. <laughs> I totally understand. Um... Dalton, do you have anything, any follow-on for that? For either Matt or or, or Colin? Well, for um, Matthew, I was I'm wondering if there was a possibility of, this comes down to graphics um, resources, but uh, maybe a Kickstarter to make um, battle maps of every one of the spaceships so that we can actually, instead of using the isometric, pull the battle maps in and use them in Fantasy Ground. Um, that's something that uh, would be really helpful for most of us. And not just these pretty top-down ones that you've got all the um, chairs in place and you have all of the consoles in place. Something where you've got the deck plan and then on another layer you've got the consoles and you can move the chairs. So you've got multiple resources that you can move around and use in the game. Um, it actually takes less work to not make those as permanently affixed and have it so that they're just separate resources that the DM can pull in. Um, yeah, I'd pay for it. I can. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I I'd pay for a Kickstarter for that. Um, it's whatever is needed to get something like that done. Right. Yeah. Now. Uh, in the old days, and by that I mean when we were doing the, uh, the original core rule books, um, we were actually starting off with um, 2D deck plans, uh, building them up, then converting them into the isometrics, uh, which is why um, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying if you go to the download section on our website, you can download all the um, deck plans in, in basic 2D format for all the ships in the core rule book. Um, that's, that was easy to do because they already existed. 
Now, for various reasons, we don't do that anymore. So we don't necessarily have 2D plans for all of the ships. Um, it's not... I would... The first thing I'll say is I would like to be able to provide um, pretty 3D isometrics in the books. And with that, as we did with the Core Rulebook, have the basic 2D deck plans for free download on our website. Um, but as you've... Um, as you already mentioned, it's uh, it's time on the uh, graphics machines um, that is not easy to come by at the moment. Um, the two bright points I can give you is that we are bringing on more graphics um, uh, graphics people onto the team. And when somebody first joins us, we don't immediately throw them into one of the big hardbacks. They do do small projects, and potentially that could be one of them. The second point is we are starting to look at different ways of presenting deck plans, um, considering a new format that will become standard in all our books. The first place you'll see this is in 2300 AD, um, a little bit later this year. Um, we haven't settled on anything at the moment, but the basic idea is that they're um, 2D, very approach approachable but also somehow very, very pretty and attractive within the book. Now, we've got to find where the balance is to strike that. Once we've got it logged in 2300 AD and got the feedback from everyone, we can start looking at bringing that back into um, uh, Traveller Core. Um, the opportunity to do that is um, the current graphics people fairly loathe the um, presentation of the current core rulebook and have been begging me to um, uh, let them revise it. Now that's that's going to be a couple of years away at um, uh, the best. We've, we've just reprinted the, the core rulebook. But we would take the lessons we learn in 2300 AD and bring them back to Traveller at that point, if that helps at all. <laughs> yes, sir. I understand. Well, um, thank you. I can also say that FGU allows you to build map pack assets as well. So when you're talking about um, a chair, a console, a table, uh, you know, a bed, whatever, you could, as long as you've got access to those individual components, you, know, you, you could build a map pack for a spaceship and give you that ability to tweak with it or to change things around. That is possible with Fancy Grounds Unity. Oh, I understand. I have um, done that. But I, um, in order to do that, I'm not an artist. I've had to buy tons and tons of um, accessories from multiple different artists. They don't have the same look and feel. And getting them to fit in, it would be nice to have a resource where I can just say, here's a scout ship. This is everything that goes in it. Here's a um, lab ship. Here's everything that goes in it. Um, but I understand um, it's the nature of business that you can't do everything. But it is something that I am willing to pay for. Now, uh, I know others are as well. Yeah. Thank you very much for hearing yeah, me. Thank you, Dalton. You're welcome. All right. We have a few questions coming in from Russ regarding uh, things that are uh, due to come out and uh, such as that. So if you want to uh, give it over to Russ, uh, G-Rex, he can uh, ask his questions. Uh, Russ, you have, I, I'm, I'm waiting to get back to you. The, uh, what's, what's, what's coming out is the final topic for our discussion. So if you wouldn't mind holding on to those till the end, because uh, I think we're going to touch at le everything you're asking is coming up. Uh, I had a question for him. Uh, it was related uh, to what we were discussing just now having to do with uh, items that could come out. I know we have with uh, Mongoose Traveler, of course, the Traveler's Aid Society community content program on uh, on Drive-Thru RPG, and I've published some of my uh, just fancy maps uh, for various things through that. Uh, but is there any opportunity to just publish uh, pure 
uh, like Fantasy Grounds uh, modules, pure FG content through that program. That's a very good question. And um, my media reaction is, um, yes, we probably should be looking into that um, uh, in some way. There, there may be some licensing issues uh, here and there, but um, I don't know if there'd be anything uh, insurmountable. I think if anyone um, fancies a crack at something like that, um, drop me an email, explain what you want to do and how you see it working, and we'll see what we can do. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Zane. Let me see. Other questions? Uh, I see some discussion about Seth's videos. So if you guys wanted to talk about Seth Skorakowski and his videos and their impact on uh, Traveler and uh, how he perceives the rules and stuff like that, uh, I think that would be a good discussion. Yeah, I think you have, yeah, you have oh, a great relationship Seth. with them, so I'd let you pick up on that. Oh, Seth is brilliant. I absolutely love him. Um, uh, I, I came across him by accident on YouTube doing, doing one of my retro YouTube dives and I caught his uh, review of Paranoia that he did off his own back um, and you see reviews for RPGs um, uh, pop up all the time but his video was absolutely excellent it wasn't just the presentation which was first class um, but his, his delivery and insights into the game as well so I reached out to him, I sent him a message, um, can I send you some um, Traveller stuff? Um, he said, fine, but I only review the stuff that I play and enjoy, so I can't give you any guarantees. Don't worry, I said, I'm very confident you're going to like what uh, I send. So I, uh, I sent off the biggest box you can imagine. Um, it's got all the core cool a whole bunch of adventures, had the Pirates of Drenax in there. Um, so I, th I think I fairly flattened him. Um, and when he started um, doing his traveler videos, uh, yeah, absolutely love them. Um, I know uh, he has managed to reach out to a whole bunch of people because um, uh, uh, I, I get uh, emails saying, love your game, um, came across it because of Seth, which is uh, always good to hear. Um, I keep bugging him to do um a, a review or over overview of the pirates of Janax. that's that's the one i really want him to do but obviously he wants to play everything first and pirates of Janax is not the kind of thing you play over a weekend um but any any fans of um uh seth uh, i will say he's already written a trap of adventure for us um he's um uh, done um, a revision retelling of uh, Murder on Arcturus Station. Um, it's now called Mysteries on Arcturus Station. It's kind of like a, a double adventure, so he's done a prelude for it. Um, that's going to be our first, first adventure set in the Soleimani Rim. That's awesome. Cheers. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, a lot of excited chatting in Discord on that one. Indeed. I was trying to figure out where I left off. That was exciting news. <laughs> Seth uh, kind of brought me back into Traveler. My experience with Traveler, uh, I first played Traveler back in the very early 80s when I was 14 at the local game store in my hometown and they ran D, D games you know first edition back then and this and that and they decided they were running a little traveler game and i joined in a few uh sessions of that of course uh ended up buying a lot of the uh original traveler material which long since uh disappeared out of my collection of possessions at this point i still have i decided to buy some of these books i think around the late 90s again just to have them on my shelf uh because i had lost all my gaming stuff from when i was a teenager and uh so i have a few like the original mark miller traveler campaign adventure the little uh red book from the 80s that uh, just really kind of a 
or a call. It's a really a trading mission, but there's a subplot of something going on. Uh, I got some of the GURPS Traveler books because I wanted to get back into Traveler and I wasn't really all that great with the original rules. And I was like, GURPS Traveler. Then I got into, like, GURPS is just too much for my my head. And then I saw Seth's videos and Mongoose Traveler and realized it was uh, going to be something. I'd been into Fantasy Grounds for a while playing uh, D&D and Cthulhu. And I said, hey. This is something that's going to be out for Fantasy Grounds. I looked at the rules. I looked at Seth's videos. They're they're very nice and concise and let you do a lot. They let you do a lot of role playing. So that's why I started getting into to MG uh, T2. So there we go. Great. Thank you. I'm just checking on the chat, see if we have any more follow-on. All right, so we're going to continue on with the uh, the topics of discussion. So we just did the uh, we just covered our pop culture items and got some Q and A done on that. I'm I'm going to go to uh, Colin. Um, how did you find yourself developing rule set conversions on Fantasy Grounds? And did you have some kind of professional background, or was this a hobby, or did or did they to convert somewhere? Uh, I've been coding professionally since 89 um i code every day but i moved into government a few years ago um, and i do more meetings than i do coding um, so I, I found like i said when we picked up fancy grounds we found a product that we could tweak write our own little scripts um, uh, and that's how i got into that uh, it's the code that he uses, the XML, the Lua scripting stuff, um, I can read that as if it was native text. It's very easy, uh, and I just really enjoy doing it. Um, and oddly enough, it was uh, we were playing uh, Savage Worlds Pathfinder, I believe, at the time, and I wanted to run Traveller, and I looked on Fancy Grounds, and there was a community edition, but nobody had done anything. So I emailed Matthew uh, at the time, and he just said, go and do it. And then, of course, when I started that, second edition came out halfway through, didn't it? Um, so I was determined to finish first edition, take a break, and then do another rule set, because rule sets take a lot of time. You know, um, When you write rules and you put them in text, you perceive them in your own mind as to how they'll work. As soon as you put them into a computer, you have to make sure that it's bulletproof. Um, and that takes a lot of the time trying to just work out, you know, a simple thing we can, humans can do. Oh yeah, if you do that, just simply add plus two to that. You gotta tell the computer that. It's easier these days, cause I've been doing it now five years, uh, but it's still a challenge. And that's why I love, I love learning. I love the challenge. Um, and Mongoose are now producing so much Traveller material, it's really hard to keep up. And there are three of us now working on the Traveller books. And when 2300 AD comes out, uh, everything's going to stop for a while because that's the game that I really want to play. Colin does make a good point there. Um... He came up with uh, uh, this idea to get Traveller onto Fantasy Grounds, and that's frankly how all the um, uh, best projects get going. Somebody contacts us and uh, says, uh, hey, I can do this. What do you think? If it sounds good, we generally say yes. That's awesome. So let's, I'd like to pick up on this topic. Uh, I just got notified we have a problem with the Twitch stream, so we're going to stop for a two-minute break, and we're going to pick up on how uh, Mongoose... Uh, you know, the, the, the work relationship they have with the Fantasy Ground developers. And if you guys don't mind, two-minute break. No worries. Okay. Get some water. And, uh, get with the room.
right, so uh, where it is, the uh, the stream is still functioning fine. So we uh, can't do a ready check like I do in Fantasy Grounds. Uh, we did say two minutes, so I'm going to give at, at five till we will start the uh, where we left off again with Matt. Um, anybody want to fill any of this white space? Lerun, you want to? You got anything? You got any questions or comments so far? Yes. So, Matt, are you with us? Sorry, yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what is the relationship with the PC builder to the rule set? Uh, I've, I've used it. I checked it out about a week ago. Um, is it just an add-on, or are you guys deeply involved with that, or is that what, what's the status on that? Uh, sorry, could you? Sorry, uh, I missed that. What was the question? Uh, the question is um, about the PC or web-based character creator. So the you can build traveler characters online. So I was asking w what the uh, affiliation or the connection was between uh, Mongoose and the character builder. Uh, is that the um, the software suite one? Yes. Ah yes, I'm with you. Um, yeah, they they have a, a license um, uh, with us. Their um, development cycle seems to be uh, somewhat slower than uh, Collins's, is, um, but it's um, uh, as you say, it's a, it's a fully licensed uh, character builder. Um, I know they're working on trying to get as uh, much of the. Um, uh, core books in as possible, but I think um, our publishing pace has uh, somewhat outstripped their um, ability to process, so uh, there's going to be some catch-up going on there, I think. So I have a question for, uh, thank you, I have a question for Mad Beard Man. Um, what was the hardest part of coding for the space combat? Do you mean the space combat that I've not finished? Yes. <laughs> um, the the complexity with Traveller is based around um, the fact that it's quite easy, again, for the human brain to go, oh, I'll add a mount. In that mount, I'll add a double turret. In that turret, I'll add a pulse laser, and I'll add a sandcaster. Mm -hmm. Now, unless I understand all that, I find I've, I have found it quite difficult um, to, I suppose, write for that eventuality because there's always some rule somewhere else that just trumps that one. And again, on paper, you can just make a scribble, can't you, or change it. Um, so people and myself, because I wanted to run Pirates of Dranax for a long time, I cobbled together a, a quite a quick system, but Fancy Grounds were telling me, oh, we're writing one for Starfinder, we're writing one for Starfinder. As soon as it's done, you can have it. Um, that took some time, didn't it? And I'd already restarted mine by the time they'd released theirs because um, I couldn't wait anymore. And I have found that I've made a bit of a mistake with weapons. Um, so I'm going to have to write some routines that allow you to uh, modify the data that's held in the Fancy Grounds backend for your campaign. So you don't notice the bump but I've got to do it. So I think the most difficult thing um, is actually weapon damage and criticals because you can fire off radiation-based weapons. You can then have hardened radiation shielding. So you've got to put rules in for that. And then, of course, missiles, fire it, and, and so on. There's just a lot of complexity around it. Whereas you shoot a laser at somebody, and if it hits, and they've got armor that protects against laser, you work out the damage, and everything's done. Um, yeah, so I've actually got, which you can't see because my webcam's not on, I've got a notebook with all my scribblings because what I've done is I've picked the high guard version of the space combat to bits and I'm slowly cobbling it together. Like, But I'm fighting at the moment with fantasy grounds in the sense of 
there's no facility for me to give you a ship that each of the characters can actually edit. Um, so I'm trying to work out how I can allow cargo uh, to be modified by the players. That's my, my big problem at the moment. I see. Um, while we're talking about development, um, looks like we need to have a, a question about the developer slash publisher relationship. Rex and I were talking about this before the stream. I don't think a lot of, I mean, I don't know who's interested in that, but if anyone creates content, um, uh, hopefully it'd be some, a similar process. So what's the relationship like between you and Mongoose or Mongoose and Smiteworks? You don't have to tell us the, the money and the, you know, the, the numbers type thing, but you know, just what, what's the process like? Like how does that work in a given month or if a new rule set comes out or anything like that? Well, from my side, um, I do have, there are three of us now who work on Traveller. Uh, and it works that effectively I'm the siphon, so everything comes through me and then I approve it effectively on the Traveller side. Uh, that's more of quality control, I suppose, but I also do a few of the graphics and bits, uh, tokens and um, strip out some of the images from the books and things like that. Uh, but that also means that I can make sure that when Harold does one of the adventures, like he sent me Great Rift Adventure number one, it looks and feels like Reach Adventure number five and March's Adventure number two. So there's a you know the same feel to no matter who writes it or who converts it, as long as it's Traveller and you can use one, you can use all. So at the moment, that all comes through me. So it's a little bit of overhead on my time. And the more people will, will add to that, I suppose, the more of my time will be taken away from doing stuff to checking stuff. Uh, but it's manageable at the moment. Great. And what about you, uh, Matt? What do you, what, what, how do you handle it? Does, do you just give it to someone, or, or do you have somebody working on it with Mightworks? Uh, no, I'd say uh, Colin's really the, um, uh, the main man here. Um, uh, it's uh, pretty much down to him um, which project he works on at any one time. Um, and it's uh, really a case for supplying um, uh, all the files he needs um, and, and uh, letting him uh, get on with it. He's far more familiar with Fantasy Grounds than we are. Um, his, his expertise as Fantasy Grounds ours is uh, building the books in the first place. Um, and uh, I found that, um, as far as this goes, my life is a lot easier if I listen to what Colin says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right on. Yeah, okay, Matthew. Is there... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'd say Matthew does get a lot of emails from me querying certain things. Mm -hmm. Give me more artwork. <laughs> yeah, or provide me this artwork so I can't strip it from the background without making everything look rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was a question in the chat. Did we pick that up? It was uh, regarding, let's see. Oh, if any of you have played uh, Traveler, um, I'm sure you have. Um, do you have any memorable war stories in the game, like in any of the editions? <laughs> that, that one's dead easy. Um, every <laughs> Friday every Friday afternoon at Mongoose, oh, um, until the lockdown came along, Every Friday afternoon, we uh, down tools and play games. Um, we try to play as many games as possible, but uh, whenever it's put to a vote, travel always pops up to the top. But um, about a year and a half ago, we brought on um, someone new, uh, Cassie, um, who, if you've seen um, a noticeable jump in artwork over the, uh, the past year in Traveller books, She's responsible for at least 50% of that. Um, as she'd been, she was a video gamer, which is something we insist with our employees now always. They've got to be gamers, no matter what their, what their exact background is. Um, they've, they've got to get into the gamer mindset. We've tried employing non-games. It, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But she'd never played Traveller before, and she'd never played um, a tabletop RPG before. Um, so I was expecting some nervousness. She took it, took to it like a duck to water. In about 10 minutes, you would have thought she was a veteran. Um, but her first character, Diddy, 
will go down in um, uh, history in Mongoose. She rolled it up with, um, what was it, Strength 2, Dex 2, Endurance 1. Uh, I was staring at that thinking, there is no way you can carry on with that. Unfortunately, we were playing the Belt Strike campaign, and she'd rolled the life event, um, you've got a gap in your memory for these four years. She'd rolled it three times. Um, and of course, with Belt Strike, you've got the whole alien sphere in there. And I thought, that is just too perfect. Um, so I let her go on with it. She didn't really know how bad her character was. Um, so she spent most of her time just trying to survive. She touched the alien sphere, got psychic powers, which nobody else in that entire campaign has. Um, and she, to cut a long story short, she ended up as a million, millionaire with her own uh, tower block, celebrity known throughout the system because she was psychic. <laughs> um, but no, she just kept going uh, into every bad situation in the worst possible way. Um, <laughs> she, she tried, uh, for the career-wise, she chose to be a drifter and stayed as a drifter tried a few careers, got booted out everyone, and that kind of set the scene to the way she uh, played through the entire game. So, um, yeah, you're, you're probably going to see Diddy. In fact, I can tell you, uh, Cassie was um, given a job recently to do the front cover of the new Mercenary box set. Diddy is on the front cover. You'll, you'll notice her immediately. <laughs> That's great. I like how you guys are incorporating your employees into your, uh, uh, your culture. And, you know, they're just not employees. They're not numbers. They're actually part of the game. They're part of the system. They're part of the overall feel of the, the company, which is a good thing. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, I mean, this has got nothing to do with the question just asked, but um, yes. we really do try to take every effort to make this not just another job. So um, we go on, um, again, we haven't been able to do this over the past year because of the lockdowns. We go on regular um, office trips. We might go to the science museum. We might go to the local wildlife park. Whenever there's a new Star Wars film, we always drive up to the luxury cinema in Cheltenham um, uh, and make a, have a whole Star Wars day. So we'll come in in the morning, have pancakes, watch the previous Star Wars film in the office, then drive up to Cheltenham and watch the film, go out for dinner in the evening to um, uh, discuss it. So, um, no, we really try to make it not another job. <laughs> that is good. I, I, I like that, that that sentiment because uh, you're not as invested. By, by the way, we'll, we, are, we are recruiting this year. <laughs> what are you recruiting for, by the way? Since you're here, go ahead and, if you don't mind. Uh, it'll be um, illustrators stroke graphic artists. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so, Mad Beard Man, um, have you played with, uh, with, your, uh, with Mongoose Manager Matt? No, no, no. I've, all my traveller experience has been with um, my own groups, I suppose. But um, I've, yeah, I've got lots, lots of memories of bits of you know characters doing s stupid things most of the time. <laughs> like one character, one game. He, he was uh, carrying. He just bought himself a. Uh, it wasn't. A, a, I think it was an FGMP, I think it was. Managed to, to buy it, got it black market, paid a lot of money for it. Uh, then decided at that time he was going to try and fire it. And of course, he did, at that time, the, the player himself didn't realise the kind of effect that weapon has in, a, in the local area that you are. Um, after he killed off a couple of the shopkeepers, and things like that, um, it just fell apart, the, the game, you know, in fun, just people rolling around laughing. And we've had people try and change tyres on a wheeled vehicle in a in a backward world and stuff like that, and then come out and go, right, <laughs> so how do we change this tyre? There you go. Yeah. Well, come on, what experience have you got of this vehicle, of this tech level, in this place? And he goes, well, none, I come from a corporate world. Well, <laughs> there you go. And bits like that, it's just pulling people out of their comfort zones. You right. can you can do that, and that's what I enjoy most, because I think we all can remember those calamitous occasions we've had in games. Hmm. A lot more, I suppose, than the mainstream things where things work out. 
Um, yeah, I, and, I agree. Yeah, and I'm just hoping that once I get one of my groups to play the Pirates of Dranax, that we have a bunch of inept pirates, because I think that's the kind of fun that you can really have with the campaign, because uh, King Oleb, he's a bit of a character himself. I would really like to see you and Matt and Zane and possibly John Brazier and maybe a couple others um, get together and just do like a you know three hour one shot together. I know that's asking a lot as far as time goes, but time forbidding. I mean that that uh, that kind of thing I think goes over well with uh, kind of bringing the community together and it ties in the talent and the dedication and the passion for the hobby and also for this particular genre. Um, I think that would be like, I, don't, I wouldn't say a celebrity event, but it would be something like that. Uh, what, that's what I envision anyways. So if you guys are interested in something like that, I would definitely um, be on board to sponsor that with you and, and do your moderation for you. Wow, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I have to bring Diddy along as well. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> but um, if we do enough uh, work and research, I think it would be a good thing. Um, so I will give the... Go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, it would require something that Matt and I haven't read. Okay. Well, it would have to be a made-up one-shot, then. Maybe Zane has enough creative juices where he can throw something at you. I don't know who would run, the, who would ref it, but uh, I think it would be a fun thing. Yeah, to Seth. Say Seth. Witness. Yeah. Seth. You know, I did invite him, but I think it was too, too, too late. Yeah, that's actually one thing I will say is um, running Traveller on Fancy Grounds, I find myself far too often analysing how I built the rule set rather than running the game. Oh, that's, that's horrible. Very <laughs> annoying. Very, yeah. very annoying. You know, you know, I'm one of these people that I can walk into a room and I noticed a picture is crooked on the wall. And all I can ever think of is why is that picture crooked on the wall? Um, so I have said on the forums that I'm selfish and that I, I will build what I want to use in the system first and everything else it. afterwards. I hear that. That's what we do in our books. <laughs> That's good. It gives yeah. you that freedom of choice. You're not stuck into a rut. That's great. Um, yeah, it keep, keeps it fresh. Yes. Um, if we did something like a celebrity thing, I would definitely like to invite one or two community members. So that would be a good thing too. Like, uh, maybe do a drawing or some kind of, uh, you know, you know. I wouldn't say a pay to buy or buy to get in, but you know, a, a selection process of some sort. Okay. Um, we were nice. Look at we got a couple more topics to hit. Now we get to we get to okay. Russ's question because uh, the release the release no schedule problem. and what's coming up is the last topic. No problem. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Man. I just pulled the hook on the boss. <laughs> So, um, and then we're about to actually we're about to get into it. So my next my next question is for Matt. So uh, Mongoose Publishing, you guys have been releasing Traveler 2E uh, products at a very rapid pace, it feels like, just torrid. Uh, and and I, I do have a list. I'm going to read out what I've seen has come out. And you guys have an interesting model where you release it to PDF uh, prior to the actual printed release. But, I mean, we've had the Dranaxian campaign, Shadows of Sindal, the Sword Worlds, uh, Aliens of Chartered Space Volume One, Aliens of Chartered Space Volume Two, the, the, the Glorious Empire just did that just came out that just dropped. Um, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's, uh, what's been going at Mongoose and how, how are you able to get so much out so fast? And then what do you have coming out? Well, um, every year in um, November I do a, a stage of the Mongoose, basically um, a few thousand words that discusses. Uh, what's been happening at Mongoose and what we're planning to do. And, um, of course, the interesting bit is all the books we're planning to release the, in the year after. And for the past two or three years, I've been putting the same titles in the books due to come out next year every single year. They just weren't coming out for um, uh, one reason um, or another. Everything was stalling. So at the end of 2019, um, I just said, sod it, come hell or high water, these set of books are coming out um, no matter what. So um, that's where you got the string of um, uh, Aliens of Charter Space Volumes 1 and 2. We um, finally managed to 
polish off um, uh, Demon Knight Revelation, Glorious Empires, past that and so forth. So no, really that was a case of us saying this has been going on too long. We really have to get these done. Stop messing around. Um, in <laughs> This all comes from in the past. We used to have a very, very tight system at Mongoose in our D20 days. We used to be able to tell uh, people, basically uh, distributors, uh, distributors and retailers, what day a book was going to come out six months in advance. There were very few other publishers that could do that. With the advent of second edition Traveller, I decided to make a change. Um, instead of, in the D20 days of doing um, four books every month, we would look at doing um, one book every four months and um, basically putting all the extra effort into the quality of the book. Um, I also made the change, and the results of this would have been should have been really predictable. Instead of having all our writers and artists work to deadlines, it would become guidelines. Um, but we wouldn't necessarily hold people to that. Um, and basically, we'd spend the time uh, on the book that it needed to be as good as we felt it could be in a reasonable manner. Um, with the predictable result that we blew through every guideline on every single book um, uh, for a few years. Um, but uh, it's for 2020, we decided, no, it's, people have been asking for these aliens ever since the core rule book come out. They need this. Let's, let's do it. That's awesome. And then how did you guys come to that business decision to do the PDF and then, and then still get the, uh, the the printed in a later date. Was that part of that, that method to get it out? Uh, no, that came down purely to our, um, what was then, our new website. We had been running this kind of ad hoc uh, system for um, some time where somebody bought our book and emailed us. Um, we would forward them uh, the PDF for free via drive through um, not amazingly professional and not exactly efficient, but our website at the time simply couldn't handle giving away free PDFs. So when we jumped to the new one, one of the things we stipulated was um, if people buy a book, they get the PDF for free as well, um, straight away. Um, uh, as, as for the, uh, the pre-ordering side of things, we actually stopped doing that um, because uh, we couldn't quite guarantee when a book was coming out anymore so we didn't want to hold on to people's monies for months and months and months so uh, but we had uh, a little bit of a revolt on our forums people wanted pre-ordering to pre-order the book and once you could give away the pdf for free they do get the book they just don't get the hard copy version until uh, two or three months after which seemed to be an, um, a fair balance to us Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good chat on this. All right, and then uh, before I open up the topic on, on, a, on a, to Mad Beer Man and what he's working on, is there is there something maybe, I know we've talked about it, but something you're excited about? It doesn't even have to be Traveler necessarily, but that that's, that, that's coming out that you guys are excited about? That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of it. Um, there's there's so much coming out for Traveller. Um, I mean, the next really big project is going to be um, the Fifth Frontier War. Um, we've been that's another thing we've been promising for a couple of years now. But we really want to make it um, an event. We're working very very closely with Mr. Miller about um, uh, about this event. It's He's opened up a real can of worms. Um, there's going to be a lot in there that even if you've been following Traveller from day one, you've delved right into the deep lore. There's going to be a load of stuff in here that you have never seen before. And I'm not talking about um, what uniform uh, the third admiral on the right um, uh, was wearing at any specific battle. It's very deep-rooted stuff that maybe you've guessed about it's never been confirmed. There's, there's going to be other stuff that's going to be complete left field and it's going to smack you around the head. Um, that's not coming out 
we're not doing a single Fifth Frontier War book. This is um, a series of books, effectively a subline for Traveller, that we think is going to be running for two or three years. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be taking you right from the very start where the, um, uh, with the causes of the war, how it was first instigated. We're going to be looking at different um, sides of the war. <clears throat> so uh, one thing we very much want to do is um, show what was happening on the Zodani side. So we will give the opportunity for travellers to play Zodani so you can see things from their point of view, how they're not just the, uh, the evil boogeymen. They are humans. They do have um, human motivations. They just approach things um, somewhat differently. Um, this is, uh, again, that touches on one of the things we've been working on to, um, for want of a better word, humanize the traditional baddies of the travel universe. So we want to make the Soleimani, uh, sorry, the Zodani, um, understand, not just understandable, but people want to actually play them and explore their society. The same with the Soleimani. They've had um, a fairly bad rep in the past. Um, um, and you're going to see the book hopefully next month that uh, opens up uh, Soleimani space. And you'll see we spent a lot of work uh, for want of a better term, denazifying them or um, de-Sovietifying them to make them not the, um, uh, the evil boogeymen of the Imperium, but some these are places you're going to want to explore in your games as Soleimani, if that makes sense. Yeah. That was a longer answer than I expected when I started. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that's excitement there in chat too. That's awesome. Okay, and I think we got my last my last prepared question for Colin. Um, what fantasy realms projects are you currently working on, and uh, do you have anything you'd like to share to the group while we're here? Um, <coughs> fantasy grounds, we limiting that to traveler or to other things apart from traveler. Uh, I I think we're good to open anything. You get any? You opposed to every, everything being open, Larry? We have somebody that has been trying to answer or ask questions, so I'd like to open it up to that person first. Uh, I'm fine with the open questions since that's a good time for it. Um, we've had a couple people. I don't know why they've been uh, basically not able to ask, but nonetheless, um, if you are here, please ask your what? questions and uh, go ahead and uh, do your thing there. Uh, yeah, well, we're, uh, Mad Beer Man is going to show the, what he's been working on, and then we're going to ask. Yeah, then Perfect. then we're going to ask about the uh, for Russ the uh, definitely for Russ on, on okay. stuff he's working on. I just wanted to see if Mad Beer Man was going to have that as the reveal before we address that. So okay. uh, I guess Matt, uh, Colin, just go go ahead and start with Traveler, and then we'll we'll take follow on questions right. from there. Okay, uh, Traveler, what I'm currently working on, um, I've finished. Very recently, in the last couple of weeks, I finished the Great Rift box set. I finished Pirates Redax. Um, I'm tidying up the adventures now. That's gone. Uh, we've got somebody else working on Sword Worlds and then Skanders Vic. Uh, we've got Harold working on Great Rift Adventures. Um, loads, loads. But I've got to focus at the moment on trying to get the rule set itself updated for spacecraft. I've already got the Traveller Companion converted and working. I've got the the Vehicle Handbook converted uh, and the vehicles are ready to go. But um, because I'm focusing on spacecraft, uh, I don't want to take the attention away from that at the moment. I'd rather we get something finished to a certain level before we introduce the next book or core book effectively. Um, I can. Just, I suppose I can show you Drenax if I can share my screen. I'll give you a guide as to what's involved in building something. If people are interested. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you do this in Discord? <laughs> okay. Why don't you give my tour, Rex? Yeah. So you should have. Um, 
depending where you're at on your screen, you'll see your turn off camera or turn on camera. Uh, next is share your screen, and it'll be to the left of your mute, hopefully. Uh, you're going to have, yep, now you share your screen, and you have two options, the actual uh, window it's, itself. Let's see, I'm going to watch stream now. Oh, I'm in. Great. And we are now streaming on Twitch. I'm in. Yep, I'm watching you on your uh, desktop. Right, okay. So this is the Pirates of Dranax that I've worked on recently, if I just minimize a few windows. I've got one single large screen. I find it much easier. PDF on the left, fancy grounds on the right, um, and you'll see here I've got all the spacecraft, ships of the reach. We've got all the vehicles, the new skills, the reference manual, everything done. Now, the way this works is everything's built uh, using text files. And they're built in a certain special way, so they go through a compiler, which Fancy Grounds has given me access to, and that spits out these particular files. Now, the rule set itself is written in XML and Lua, um, and you're actually seeing the code that's part of the rule set. So we've got all these individual little files, and they all go and do something special. Um, and at this moment in time, I've been working on if I go into my source control, uh, pending attacks for ships, adding some new decals, space weapon attacks, data options. So these is the new settings for the uh, optional characteristics that are in the Traveller Companion. Um, there's a check there that you've got the Traveller Companion at the moment, but I've removed that so people can start playing with it. Uh, and I've made it flexible enough so that people who are playing Aslan characters and the GM has switched on a new setting in options, that they will see the territory characteristic. They will see then the territory characteristic will appear on just that Aslan character, things like that. Oh, that's my kids moving about behind me. Um, so a, that's the basics of it. It's a lot of thinking, working, typing, testing, copying, converting, running, building. Uh, and then that's not to mention the stuff that I have to use Photoshop for as well. So there are certain things you have to go in here and, and build up your maps. And anybody who's ever tried to convert their own material for Fancy Grounds will recognize the various stages of modifying files and image files and cutting out little bits and things like that. But they have to be done, I believe, to a certain professional quality to match that of the books. And that takes a lot of time. Right. That's my screen share done, I think. How do I turn it off? Stop. Yep. Close stream. Yeah, awesome. There we go. Thanks for sharing that. So. I'm going to, you got anything else before? I got, I got, Russ has got some very good questions and so does a few of our other uh, attendees on what you've got coming out, Colin. Was there anything else you wanted to, to prep first or did you want to field those questions? Um, no, I'd just say I also work on a few other lines within Fancy Grounds uh, and there is stuff coming out for all those as well. Any of you Call of Cthulhu players, Masters of Nilothotep, 10th edition, all 666 pages with 250 NPCs, 1,000 images, um, it's finished. Oh, it sucks. And I'm playtesting it at the moment. Yeah, there's also an update coming to Vampire as well to allow players to set the difficulty. Oh, cool. Um, so, yeah, um, spread across a few projects, but I've been speaking to people at Fancy Grounds to try and reduce them down to... Uh, less products because I also do the what's all is new. I built that rule set as well um, Working with two guys on that at the moment and I'm taking one guy through hopefully taking that off me So it gives me more time because unfortunately I have a full-time job Doing other things not building this stuff. I'd love to build this stuff all day. It's far more interesting I can tell you that for free that's me. Thank, Thank you. you. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna start with Russ because I, I wanted uh, his questions had to do with a lot with what, what you were bringing out and releasing a traveler. So Russ, you are now unmuted. 
do you know what? Uh, really, I got a bunch of questions, but the main one is, uh, is there going to be integration so that when you buy a hardcover book from Mongoose, you can get the Fantasy Grounds and the PDF at the same time? Very good question. This is something we've been painfully aware of. Um, uh, first off, sorry, you're, we know you're effectively buying stuff twice at the moment. The problem with that, and I'll be honest, we haven't found a way around this yet, is that the modules for uh, Fantasy Ground aren't um, uh, simply conversions uh, of books. We we don't send uh, a PDF to Colin who puts it through a grinder and out pops a uh, Fantasy Grounds module. He's actually coding stuff. He's actually building a new pro uh, product from the stuff we give him. Um, and uh, to be honest, he needs, he needs compensating for that. So it's um a problem of where you start um uh, of where you apply that effective uh, discount to fantasy grounds needs to uh, keep running so everyone's got a platform to run colin needs to eat um and the only other place it can come from is from our books which is um kind of what mongoose is built on so i don't see a way around that yet um as I say, it is it doesn't feel like I know, but it is effectively two separate products. Um, if we find a way, we'll do it. Can't see how we can do it at the moment. Sorry. Thanks. I'll just say something there. Yeah. Um, Central Supply Catalog took me four months of my life to convert. <laughs> Um, data, because it's nothing but what there are 1,100 items in it. It's pure data. It has to be built, has to be put into those text files, have to be compiled, have to be tested. Um, I don't do this for the money, but I'd like to. Um, I'd like to stick fingers up to our government and uh, tell them I don't want their work anymore. Um, so... so um, yeah, it's a very, very difficult question, and I don't know how it can be done myself. <laughs> yeah, just as a side note, just so you know, it's not about the money. I think it's about getting it all in one's place. That's all. That's my question. I know you got to eat, too. <laughs> huh. uh, so we'll keep looking into it. Can't see an easy solution at the moment, but we'll keep trying. I do play the National Lottery every week, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> did you, Russ, did you want to ask about the Mongoose release that's coming for the uh, tour of the Imperium? Yeah, there are a couple of questions. Do you know when the tour of the Imperium is coming out at, at, on the hardcover? And uh, are they going to integrate the calendar into into the the Imperium timeline. So if you know, oh, I'm playing from this date to this date, you might say, oh, that was the day the Emperor died, or that was the day this system blew up, or this tech level was reached, or whatever. Okay. Well, first, um, on tour of the Imperium, um, that's uh, another one of the projects that we've been um, messing around with for far too long. The good news I can give you is that... Um, recently appointed new, new veteran traveler writer, Christopher Griffin, has uh, finished last year the manuscript for a book called The Third Imperium. I finished editing it over the Christmas break, and I can tell you, I can look at my little chart now, Cassie is due to start laying it out and collating all the art in July, so around, I'm guessing, September time. You will see a book called The Third Imperium. It goes into um, some deep lore on how the Imperium works, how it was created, what came before. It will include the entire uh, core sector in there. Um, Chris was already talking about writing actual um, core adventures, so you'll be able to start playing there. The book will come with the big um, sector poster map, um, as with all the other um sectors 
and if you receive this well, and I've got a feeling you will, um, it's going to be the first in a new line of um, Empire books. We're likely, we're likely to do the Zidane Consulate uh, next, but you can expect to see all the um, major, major race empires covered in this series over the next, I'm guessing, two, three years, um, each with um, the central sector um, uh, detailed out, ready for play. Sorry, there was a second part to your question. What was that? Oh, about integration in Fantasy Grounds has a calendar that you can use. Ah, uh, yes. To, um, to the third period. As far as the tabletop game, uh, sorry, the uh, the printed version of the game is concerned, mostly no, because um, because of the way tra uh, travel works uh, in Traveller. You're always spending these weeks in um, hyperspace, so you're going to hit situations where the referee wants an event to take place while the players are on a certain planet, um, but they simply can't get there because they um, uh, got distracted and um, went the long way around. Um, the only time we will do something like that is when we have a major event, the obvious one being the forthcoming Fifth Frontier War. Um, so uh, as far as... As far as Mongoose is concerned, um, the timeline is always somewhere in the year 1105, and referees can mess around with that as they see fit for their own campaigns. Um, as far as the calendar and fantasy ground is concerned, that is something we could play with. Yeah, Thanks. Colin, do you have any, do you, do you manage the calendars in any way on your end? Um... I'm very loose. I did email Matt to actually find out what was the the base year, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, so that's my answer. Oh, no, Sorry. Good. All right, uh, and we're just I'm going through um, the questions now that were relevant to the topics of the release schedule, which was seemed to be the most popular. So uh, that was Russ. Did you have anything else? I, I think I just scrolled through everything and. No, that's really about it. Yeah. Do you think that is if that Seth Scorkowski, is he going to start playing on Fantasy Grounds? Does anyone talk to him? Uh, I haven't, but uh, I'd welcome it. Yeah, we'll have to do a, a community of, uh, event to, uh, to promote it to Seth to encourage him to check it out. Okay, I'm scrolling through my questions, guys. And I'm sorry if, if you got ignored or felt on the back burner. I just was waiting for these to come up because uh, I knew they were in part of the, the moderation. So I'm going back through what I had highlighted. So um, it's Dimbid, D-I-M-B-D. -D. He, he says there's any chance of Mind Jammer. Uh, do you want me to? I could open you up, Tim. We may have left. Nope, there he is. I got you, Tim. I'm unmuting you now. Hello. Can people hear me? So. Um, yes. Is there any chance of a uh, mind jammer for Mongoose Traveler uh, being released on Fantasy Grounds? It's a, it's a very evocative setting. So, um, I would really like uh, to see it. That's my question. If he's not there, I can tip in on my gamma. I, I'd, I'd agree with that one. I'd like that. I think Sarah Newton's done a fantastic job on it. And I, I can see the mind jammer books when I stare at them on my bookshelf next to me. Um, I don't know what's happening with the licensing with um, Mind Jammer at the moment. Um, I know Sarah's um, been having some um, uh, problems over the last year or so, um, so we're going to have to see how that shakes out. Um, on the face of it, wouldn't have any issues, but we'd, I'd need to sit down with her and uh, have a chat about it. Great. Anything else, Tim? 
Uh, no, that that sounds uh, quite encouraging. Um, Sarah's been through uh, a hideous uh, 18 months or so. Uh, she got widowed. Um, so, <clears throat> think, yeah, fingers crossed we can have okay. some focus. Um, I got a question here. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, Crockett's from Twitch. He's been trying to ask if um, if it's if we're able to to link to the TravelerMap.com website via Fantasy That's Grounds. That's a great one. So you know how you could put links up and then maybe have it link into the uh, rule set itself. And he wants to know if that has anything to do with mongoose. No, it has to do with me. Um, on oh. that, it's possible the problem with the traveler map is it doesn't always agree with what's in a book mm. i can chip in on that one um we treat traveler map as canon until we have to change it <laughs> um what that basically boils down to um is every time we uh cover a new sector whether it's um, uh, behind the claw or um, spin with extents, which I'm, I'm working on at the moment, um, there is as those books get put together, there's a lot of uh, intense conversations taking place in among what we call the uh, the traveller inner circle, studying these worlds, figuring out um, what absolutely needs to um, stay the same, what needs changing, um, and whenever we bring out um, the book. We uh, always fire a, a copy off to, off to uh, Joshua, who runs Traveller Map, for him to update it. So um, the Traveller Universe is, um, will always be a work in progress. Um, so don't treat absolutely everything on Traveller Map as sacrosanct, but as time goes on, um, it will start agreeing with the books more and more. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I can just imagine clicking on a link on Traveler Map, and it takes me right to the store page where I want to buy the content that goes with the area. <laughs> There's a lot we could do with Traveler Map. Um, at the moment, Traveler Map is a pure work of love um, on the part of Josh. Um, long, long may he reign. Um, we'll, we'll have to see how it develops. We have started incorporating it more um, into our books, as you'll see in um, uh, Glorious Empire, for example. Nice. Okay. I, I got, I'm scrolling to my next question that went uh, unasked so far, and that was with Dalton uh, asking about Mayday Brilliant Lances. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to unmute you, Dalton, and you get to explain it. And I, I'm sure that's for Colin on Space Combat. Hi. Uh, Mayday was the first adventure board game made for Traveler back in, I believe it was 78. Um, and it was small ship combat using vector movement. Brilliant Lances was the um, TNA version of um, space combat. Uh, there were um, different versions of it. But basically, it is a miniatures or um, little, if you remember the days of squad leader, little paper chit combat on boards that were basically just hex maps. Um, a modern day version of that from Matthew that could be easily turned into something that Colin could automate. It would clean up a lot of the stuff in space combat. Yes. Now, um... The very first thing I would say to that is um, I don't believe, happy to be proved wrong, I don't believe vector-based movement has any place in a modern miniatures game. Um, we have computers now. Computers do it far better. Um, you don't want to spend your time calculating anything while you're playing um, a tabletop game these days. You just want to play the actual game, if you, if you see what I mean. On a more positive <laughs> note, um, Traveller miniatures um, are something we have been um, looking at in the past and we still continue to do so. 
Uh, it's our current feeling that Mongoose doesn't want to get involved in the actual production of miniatures, although designing actual miniatures game is something that um, uh, we feel we can still be very good at. Um, we have spoken to um, uh, miniatures, uh, miniature games manufacturers uh, in the past. Um, the one we have a very good relationship with at the moment is Warlord Games. Um, they're currently, they've just released our Victory at Sea uh, naval game with a full line of miniatures. Uh, unfortunately, um, if anyone knows their uh, release schedule, they are absolutely packed at the moment to the next two or three years. However, we have recently started talking to another, let's say, large tabletop games manufacturer who has uh, dabbled in miniatures. Um, don't know if anything is come, uh, going to come of that, but maybe you will see a Traveller miniatures game in the not amazingly distant future. Um, instead of going the route of making your own, and don't get me wrong, I've bought almost every miniature that Mongoose has produced over the years. Thank you very much, um, sir. <laughs> um, but the you could you could use SLTs instead of um, doing your own manufacturing, um, so that people with three D printers can print out their own, um, and just come up with the mechanical rules themselves. We um, could, I, yeah. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, we could. Um, but with the state of SLTs and 3D printing at the moment, um, it is all a bit, without wanting to sound denigrating to it, a bit back room at the moment. And um, while it, uh, um, while in 10, 15 years' time, it may be the standard for miniatures. It's not there yet. And I would feel that Traveller deserves something a bit more, if you, if you see what I mean. Um, oh. we, don't, we don't want to release something just because we can. We want to give the full package. So whether it would be um, ship-based combat or um, something in the 28mm uh, arena, uh, we would want to provide the full thing, not, not just bits and pieces. Understood. Um, I've got, I've done some vector-based and uh, using hexagons. It works and doesn't require any calculations. If you want, I can send it on to you. Absolutely. I'll, I'm happy to take a look, although I will warn you, you just turned me off as soon as you said hexagons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just using it because of Fantasy Grounds with their hex-based um, uh, board. Sure. Where you can put a star map and then a hexagon over the top. Uh -huh. So yes, um, it it's designed mostly for that environment, but it also um, takes a lot from the original Traveler, which was also based on hexagons. Well, it's um, that, that I say that could possibly work as a pure fantasy grounds uh, project because uh, I'm sure Colin hasn't got enough to do at the moment. He's always looking for a new challenge. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, so thank you very much. Speechless. <laughs> we do we do have about thirteen minutes left, so I do want to. We got a couple more questions we haven't got to. So Dalton, if you don't mind, I'll, I'm going to pass it real quick so we could get the uh, opportunity in for others. Uh, next up, uh, Adzling, you've been waiting patiently to ask Matt a question. I'm going to unmute you. I don't know if that works. Yep. Can you hear me? Hey. Um, Thanks for doing this. Um, I was just wondering, there's, I've been getting back into Traveler, and I've noticed that the rules are very fragmented a lot across a lot of books. And it seems like uh, in the different modules and stuff, there's little snippets for specific uh, situations uh, that aren't covered in the, in the main rule books. So I was just wondering if you ever thought about going, going around and collating all those weird little uh, sort of rule judgments into a, I don't know, an advanced rule book or something more coherent? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, first, the first thing to say to that is I'm very hesitant about um, reprinting um, material because um, it kind of feels like we're asking you to pay for the same thing twice. Um, the, big, uh, the big thing they had for that was the Aslan in um, Aliens of Charter Space Volume 1 because they had already appeared 
in uh, Pirates of Dranax. Um, but we bounced around our forms and people said, yeah, we, we kind of want this in one place, which is kind of what you're talking about. However, what when you start looking at the wider picture um, uh, and look at, say, uh, ship targeting rules in uh, Pirates of Dranax, um, or uh, some of the rules we floated in the companion, um, or in terms of uh, rules that tie to the background of uh, Chartered Space, um, uh, the, uh, the journals of the Traveller's Aid Society. Um, when you start looking at trying to draw all that together into something more cohesive, what you're actually talking about is a new edition of the game. Um, and we're really not, for once, we're really not looking at doing that at the moment. Um, I mentioned earlier we're looking at um, sprucing up the core rule book. The core rules won't change. I mean, there might have been some little, um, tiny little uh, tweaks or corrections, but the game will be the same thing. I'm very, very hesitant to think about a new edition at the moment because more or less the core rules work well to portray Traveller at the moment. And if we did do a new edition, we would run the risk of invalidating um, all these supplements we've done over the past few years. And I think they're way too nice to do that. So you raise a good question. Um, I think it would best be handled at the moment as something like, I don't know, um, a Traveller's Guide to Chartered Space, and we draw together um, all, all the cool rules there. It's, it's kind of, we're kind of like talking about a second companion, really. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree with everything you said, um, but I, one of the things I think that travel rule set misses, and I think a lot of RPG rule sets miss it, is they don't look at the game from the perspective of what is the player trying to do and how do we have rules that cover uh, breaking into an airlock. Obviously, that's there, but, you know, uh, trying to uh, anticipate where a ship is jumping to based upon its neutrino emissions. That's one of the awesome little rule snippets in POD. Um, that but, sort of stuff um, would be great, I think, if you collated and add some background setting lore that fleshes out on how do you break into somebody's comm link and access it uh, to find their social media posts into like a GM yeah. companion or something like that. But the problem with that is figuring out how to do it without ending up with a 500-page core rulebook. Um, the problem we had with the current rulebook is we were initially aiming to have it under 200 pages, which we felt... No, I, 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 I agree with that. I was saying as a companion, as another companion book. You know? So anyway, I don't want to... No, 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 you make a good point there. But again, the problem is going to be we're going to end up with six Traveller Companions the longer GM, it runs material is GM spend the most money though <laughs> yeah us GMs make the most yeah. um, that's unfair you do make I, mean, I would think Traveller Companion 2 which is something we thought about would be all new information but perhaps we should go around hoovering stuff up I mean it would be a purely optional purchase I'll give that some thought sir Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Esling. I'm going to go ahead and put you back on mute. I think we're almost time for the drawing. I said we would we would stop at 10 till, but um, we got a rapid fire question. I think maybe Aussie Hope uh, asking for more merch. But I'll open up Aussie, see if he wants to add on that real quick. It's going to have to be rapid fire, Aussie. If I can find you. I don't think oh, yeah, he jumped chat. out. Okay, next up is Dos Fox. You did have a conversation going already with Mad Beardman uh, about creating a, a sector. Would you like to vocalize that at all? Open it up for you, uh, Dos. He's, he's, he's good. good. Okay. Yep. You know, get those last questions in that you think I may have missed. Um, while you are doing that, I am going to start uh, a screen share on the uh, the Mongoose Traveler 2 core rulebook hardcover giveaway. I have extracted the Excel document uh, from our scheduling. I'm going to start the share on that now. Uh, if you did sign up on the on the Fantasy Grounds college.net website for the registration, you were entered to uh, a chance to win on this drawing. All right, where?
Okay, hopefully that is live. I'm gonna pop this up for the uh, the stream. Okay, so I have you all numbered uh, one through 28. I hid all your personal information, so stick around afterwards and we'll we'll sort out how we're gonna get this to you. So I'm just gonna type in a, create a random number generator right here in Excel. One and twenty-eight. Manoa. All right. There it is. The number twelve. Alan, do we have an Alan? Sorry, my push to talk keeps bringing up my search bar. Uh, Alan, three. Yeah, okay. right, you are you are the winner. Stick around after this. We'll we'll chat about getting you this core rulebook. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so. You're welcome. Alan, are you in the EU? Uh, yes. Perfect. I'm in Greece. Nice. Okay, with our our five minutes remaining, I, I would like to give a, a minute or two to each of our guests. Um, I personally, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I didn't know uh, this was going to turn out this way uh, with our with our audience. Uh, uh, great guests, uh, great questions. Uh, Laroon letting me stream this and record it. Uh, everything all around. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very fortunate to be a part of the process, and I want to thank you all first. Uh, but uh, as our outgoing, I'll let I'll let uh, Matt, if you'd like uh, to say any parting words on the way out. Um, yeah, d just an uh, odd one, really. I did notice in the Traveller chat forum, um, somebody mentioned, um, uh, was it Twilight's Peak earlier? Uh, yeah. This, uh, it has been, um, we did start to write it. We were going to use it um, as a 10-episode uh, adventure path to as a prequel to Secrets of the Ancient, um, and then to... Um, uh, a second long span campaign to form like kind of a, a trilogy for the uh, the ancients. Um, that's an idea. It might appear in the future. The groundwork's there, but um, I say too many projects, too little time. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and uh, Mad Beard Man. Uh, I'll just carry on playing Traveller on Fantasy Grounds. Uh, just be active, active on the forums. We've got some really good forum members, um, guys off their own back. I presume they're guys, by the way, um, helping out others, answering questions, things like that. And, you know, like Dalton's done, he's he's put some great ideas into my head. Uh, and I like to, with every few updates, just include little bits and bobs so that people um, can just experience a bit more. Because the GM has enough you know, of a job, don't they, running a game, especially over VTT, handling the players, bits like that. You know, the more the rule set can, can do for them, um, the better. And you've got coming up very soon, the combat tracker will support uh, tactics roles, things like that. And that's me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Colin. And... Uh... I'd be remiss not to put Founder Laroon. Uh, this is your opportunity, man, to uh, give us an outro. Okay. I want to thank all of you for attending. Um, don't forget, there is still a contest on our website. Uh, we can put the links in there later, but they basically will point to the digital copy of the Fantasy Grounds version. So if you don't own the rule set or you're kind of uh, you know in the, in the pocket where it's you know a little expensive for you, that might be a good way good avenue for you uh last time i look i didn't see a lot of participants so your chances of winning one of there's two copies um the chances of winning that are is pretty good and those were um put up by smiteworks themselves they donated those so i want to thank the doug and their team for introducing all this together and uh helping us support us on the back end and i would really like to see more of this happening from the community so I'd like to get all the great minds together on rule sets and get them to talk and communicate because um, this is a good way for you guys to sell things, but it's also a good way for you guys to understand what your community needs. 
and on the other side of that community gets a chance to look up to some of the people that they're inspired by so it is just a good thing so we have other things coming up this month uh or next month also but if we have a list of events on our website that pretty much tells us what it tells you what we're doing for traveler and next month is the second edition D D. yep uh, we do have sorry one more symposium too i should throw that out there uh, on the 29th uh, matthew's been invited back to that if he could make it and uh, Zane will be talking about his Traveler Aid Society process and um, may have a, a surprise guest to TBD to be confirmed, we'll say. <laughs> now it's great. Good times, folks. Yeah, thank you all for joining. Indeed. I'll be, I'll be sticking around here for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to kill this stream. Indeed. I'll be, I'll be sticking around here for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to kill this stream and start unmuting you all.